It's about damn time. Ant-Man and the Wasp is the 20th film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that is finally out in the UK because for some stupid reason Marvel and Disney pushed release back to August for us in the UK so after getting it spoiled for us for the last month we can finally see it for ourselves on the big screen. And just so you know because this video is so late for you guys in America I'm going to talk some spoilers in here not full plot point by plot point I'm just going to mention some spoiler stuff because I feel like it. And for the past month I've seen a lot of people say Ant-Man and the Wasp is fine it's passable entertainment but not top tier Marvel film and I was expecting to be the one schlub who really really enjoyed it and it's going to be by myself in terms of how much I enjoyed it but after finally seeing the film for myself I gotta agree with all the people who said the film's fine it's decent. What I liked about the film first I liked Ant-Man and I liked The Wasp the two title heroes they carry this film they have really great superpowers Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly have really good chemistry together I love them as a superhero duo. The whole concept of shrinking down to size it plays with some really unique action scenes. I love the shrinking stuff in the first Ant-Man but I felt like they outdid themselves with the shrinking stuff in that man and the wasp. For instance, the part where they're inside the car and they shrink underneath the van and they flip it over and they're like driving away from all the debris and it looks like this big avalanche of death and destruction when in reality they're just coming away from bricks and stones. I just love that unique stuff about the Ant-Man films. I love the shrinking stuff and it was also really well done from a CGI point of view. It was all excellently done. There's nothing about Ant-Man and the Wasp that I hated or despised. It's just I didn't find it to be that remarkable of a film unfortunately. The film tries to go for heart and emotional resonance especially with the whole trying to rescue Janet Van Dyke from the Quantum Realm storyline and there are some good parts with those characters like Hank and Hope and Janet but the film never really hit me emotionally the emotional resonance that they were going for didn't really affect me all that much I'm afraid and they tried doing that with the villain Ghost a few times that didn't really work for me either speaking of Ghost let's talk about the villains of Ant-Man the Wasp which I've also heard some pretty bad things about and yeah they weren't really that great I understood Ghost's motivations because she's constantly phasing and she's about to die so she obviously wants to stop that from happening but I just didn't really connect her as a character I didn't care about her as a character as a physical villain I thought she was pretty cool which is phasing through the objects it played for some again cool action scenes and some cool fight scenes but as a character villain she could have been better and Walton Goggins character existed pretty much to be a plot device to move the plot along and to give Ant-Man and the Wasp somebody to fight and I understand that's what most villains in films are they're just there to move the plot along and give the hero somebody to fight but at least do something more than just that basic thing and that's what Walton Goggins character was in that man and the wasp also the comedy in the film was a bit 50 50 for me paul rudd was funny sometimes he has some cool lines like he's trying to learn those magic tricks people are like oh how did he do that that was quite funny and michael penny as Luis was really good once again he has that scene again where he's like so we were doing this doing this and everyone's doing the narration as Luis. that was quite funny but there was some other comedy that didn't work for me like the whole jimmy woo character didn't really care for him as a person and his comedy with paul rudd didn't really do anything for me but what it all boils down to with that man and the wasp is that i couldn't get emotionally invested into the story or the characters which leads Ant-Man and the Wasp to be a passably entertaining film for me. I had a fun time watching the film for the most part. Like I said the action was really well done and it's a lot of fun to watch. I like Ant-Man and the Wasp as a superhero duo but just from a storyline perspective I felt like it could have been stronger. This is the first MCU film in a while that I've walked out of underwhelmed and it bums me out that the film wasn't as good as I wanted it to be but make no mistake I still enjoy the film for the most part. It's a decently entertaining film so I'm gonna go three out of five for Ant-Man and the Wasp. I stayed for both post credit scenes and the mid credit scene I got spoiled for me like a couple weeks ago I saw someone in the comment section say oh Ant-Man got trapped in the quantum realm I'm like Cheers that one dude. But it's still a pretty good mid credit scene though and it provides even more questions going into Avengers 4 and I like that stuff. The post credit scene, uh, people were saying the post credit scene was pointless and it was in the trailer and as soon as I read that I was like, it's going to be the ant on the drums isn't it? That's going to be the post credit scene and I was right, it was the stupid ant on the drums thing. So Ant-Man and the Wasp, have you seen the film? Scratch that, you have seen it. If you're watching this video you've seen Ant-Man and the Wasp by now so what did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more of my videos click on one of these and I'll see you all next time.